he, what he's known for is this dance move where he lassoes his arm around the air while he's smacking his own butt with his other hand. We will be out in public, we'll be in restaurants. My family will just start chanting, horse, 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 because that's the dance move name, and he will just take off. <laughs> is up friends welcome back to another episode of hopefully your favorite podcast overshare i am jocelyn davis with my girl lily marston i realized Lil, we've never said our last names on this show before have we it's kind of weird to introduce myself with my last name it just feels so formal it's kind of weird to even call you lily like i i can barely even get that word out i used to say this i feel like it's not as <laughs> It used to be really hard for me to say, and it's still in the sense that when I introduce myself, no one ever hears Lily. See, it's like, it's kind of just like Lily, Lily. But um, I've said it. People are like Willie. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, fucking idiot. No, my name's not Willie. Are you kidding? Like, <laughs> honestly, though, that would be like a great name for a young child, like Willie, like that seems fun. Do you know, randomly that just unlocked a memory who I introduced myself to and that's what they thought my name was? R Ross Lynch. <laughs> oh, interesting. Ross Lynch, who you might know from his Disney Channel fame on Austin and Alley. When he used to be the in band, the, the hit band R5. R5. He also used to stalk them. Yep. I, I was on tour with their family for like literally a year making a documentary series. Um, and he's also on the show Sabrina the Teenage Witch or whatever it's called on Netflix. Oh. And and Lily, you would love this. Guess who he's playing? And he I think he even got nominated for it an already award. Happened. Ted Bundy? The, no, Jeffrey Dahmer. I, that's what I meant. It's a serial uh, killer. I knew you would love that about him. It's, it's, it's totally on brand for you. Um, anyway. What do you, what do you say we jump in? Let's do it. So over it. What she said. Okay, Lil. Talk to me, baby girl. What are you over this week? <sighs> this feels very, um, <laughs> what's the word when it like doesn't apply? Like it, most people won't get it. Uh, <laughs> non, <laughs> not applicable to so most like, human beings. Is there a word for uh, that? that? It's like esoteric. Um, Unrelatable? <laughs> I don't know. Um, the, my lights are like, it's just, they're, oh my God. You mean your production she, lights, correct? Whoa, whoa. Oh no, she's losing it, folks. As There's a perfect example. They just are so, whoa. Uh, <laughs> literally, they're, it's, they're such pieces of that they shouldn't be. And I don't like treat them poorly. I'm like, I'll just leave it like that. It's not bad. Um, that's yeah, okay. Uh, it, it's like I don't, I don't bring them anywhere. It's not like I'm throwing them around. I move them from my office to the living room and back, very like gently. And somehow they don't. Now, if you tighten them, it doesn't actually tighten all the way. So they're like swinging around and falling, and it's just. Well, they do make you look gorgeous. So you know what? Sometimes beauty is pain. Blow me out. You know, <laughs> my skin is actually doing. Uh, very, I can't say it out loud because then it'll just be a disaster. But it's I'll okay. I'll tell you, you look moment. fantastic. Your lighting is great, but I'm sure you look amazing IRL as well. It's funny because actually, how the lighting is right now, it looks like a disaster. But on the camera that's recording, I think it's actually <laughs> top notch. I know. What I are think you it's over. Oh, yes. Um, I was going to say also at some point we should reveal like screenshots of what our Zoom like little setups look like, because I mean, if there was a reason that I needed to move, I I'm trapped amongst so many cords, so many tables, like just accoutrements and Honestly, things. Before I even had the light issues, my other over it was just going to be cords because it was actually was a light issue. I was getting the cord that I had left plugged in in the living room. And I don't know how, but the nest of cords that is accumulated next to my TV, it's like I'm untangling them. And I'm like, how could this have possibly happened? They're like wrapped around each other, like as if I strategically did it. And it just makes no sense. Oh, my gosh. It's 2021. I wish cords didn't exist. Actually, good point. I mm -hmm. feel like everything should just be powered by the moon or I something agree. at this point. Don't Didn't you agree? Know that that's where that was going, but yep. sure. Yeah, I think that we should have figured that out. What the f I guess? <laughs> um, okay, what I'm over is something that I know I've discussed with you before, but I don't know that I've discussed on this podcast. And it's something that I 
went in a little miniature rant about on Instagram yesterday, which is also off brand for me because I don't typically get my gears grinded. Like you except, don't typically rant. <laughs> no, I don't. And I also, I, I let all my gear grinding happen on this show because I don't have a lot of it to go around. But here is what upsets me. So over the years working at Clever or even prior to that, um, I don't like getting rid of any of my clothes because I love rewearing the same things all the time. And we're seriously like, I'm talking about my winter formal dress from high school, uh-huh. which she, is she literally over 20 years ago. I used to wear in clever videos. Uh-huh. I wore it to a wedding recently. Why? Because I freaking love it. And why wouldn't I wear it more than once? Right. Or like I wore a dress to Coachella, this really cool orange fringe dress. Then I wore it to a red carpet and people are like, you're so brave to wear the same thing twice. I can't believe it. Ugh. Okay, here, here's, here's what bugs me, right? And I was like, well, where are we? <laughs> here's what bothers me about this, okay? Do you know who's never been asked about wearing the same pair of pants twice? Or like, ooh, you wore the same shirt. What a smart move. Any man ever alive. Mm-hmm. It is I will not tell a- you, actually, I saw an entire um, post about Noah Centineo making fun of him because he was wearing the same pants to everything. Well, that's a genius move. If you have a pair of pants that you love, you should wear them every day, okay? I don't understand this concept of like having to buy something new and wear something new every single moment. I think it's super unrelatable, okay? Or esoteric, which I don't think is the right word at all. Um, But it's, it's a fun word to say and it made me feel smart. I just don't think it makes sense. So here's what I'm doing. To Intended rectify- or likely to be understood by only a small number of people with a specialized knowledge. Yeah. The specialized knowledge is that it should not be happening. Okay. That's my thought. So here's how I'm rectifying the situation. I have decided that for either one week or 30 days, I'm leaning towards 30 days. I'm going to wear the same thing every day and style it differently every single day, just to prove to the world that you do not need to buy new clothes for every day of the month. Follow-up question. Yes. That gives me anxiety because are you going to wash it? Well, a here, the, amazing question. Amazing <laughs> or question. Or are you going to buy a bunch of them? Because that's what I would So do. my sister actually did this. Did you ever know that my sister had a blog before she had kids? I vaguely remember this. So my sister had a blog and she did this challenge didn't probably 10 years it? ago. I didn't do it. She did it. And I think I might have like shared it on my socials at the time, which at the time was like probably just Twitter and Facebook. I was so a my, follower. So my sister did this on her blog probably 10 years ago. She got a black wrap dress from Old Navy and she wore it every day for 30 days. And I'm not kidding you, not a single one of her students, she's a high school teacher, no one noticed. No one noticed, no one caught wind of it. She's like, either no one cares about me or really like no one cares about the clothes because not a single person noticed. But what she did was she bought two so that she could wash them. So, I mean, you want to stay sanitary, obviously. So I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. So I had my Instagram followers vote and guess what they picked for me to wear? A nice little leopard print frock. So here's the thing. If people Not don't know the most versatile. <laughs> no, but leopard is a neutral. I mean, it's definitely a neutral. No, it, for, well, it just, it goes with any color. Yes. But it's not like it won't be noticeable. So here is my next thought. You mm-hmm. should do it with me. 30 days. 30 days. You should wear the same thing every single day. A leopard print dress. And you could put your pants on here, underneath here, of it. Yeah, I was going to say, here's the thing. is like, I... <laughs> I basically do. (laughs) Well, then I just say make it official so that we could prove our freaking point to the world. This, if anything, would literally just be enabling me to buy a a backup version of the same sweatshirt. Listen, it's good for the environment. No, no. It is because you'll only be like you're showcasing a good example of wearing the same thing, not buying a bunch of fast fashion, you know? I just think this would work better if I was going places. (laughs) You should start going places. You should go outside. I don't know. The beach, take a walk, something like that. When I see people at the grocery store that are like ready, I'm like, (gasps) what's wrong? (laughs) Anyways, by the time this episode comes out, who knows? Maybe I'll be in the thick of this challenge. I plan to document it somewhere, probably Instagram, but... Um, really would love to encourage you guys to join the party if you're interested and come and hang out with me and Lily just, as we wear the same outfit for 30 days. It's reminding me of um, when we did our twins video. 
Wow. Those were the days of our lives. One of the best videos we ever did. It it actually is. It still holds up. It's actually filmed terribly. (laughs) It kind of gives me a headache to watch, but edited. I crack myself up with the edit. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Well, Um, Lil. Let's listen to our caller. That's what I was going to say. What what do do you guys have to say? Also, as a reminder, before we jump into the call, if you have not been on this show yet, please call us. Let us know what you're over in three minutes or less. We would love to know your name if you feel comfortable sharing it. The number is 562-661-5729. And with that, roll the tape. Hi, guys. I really love the podcast. I'm calling in because I'm so over middle-aged men hitting on the girls who's old enough to be their daughters. Like, hello, my parents are the same age as you. Kindly leave me alone. It's really happening to me, and it's been going on for a while. This middle, this middle aged man came up to me saying that he would like to know me. And at first I was literally just creeped out by it because I, like, he's around the same age as my parents. And I was just like, ghost out. So I was like, but I politely told this man, no, thank you. And he had the audacity to tell me I was being unfriendly. And in that moment, I just wanted to, like, literally cuss at him. But, like, the way I was raised, the inner, the docu, whatever the word is in me, wanted to be polite to him. So I just left. But, like, honestly, I'm so sick of it. Like, sir, leave me alone. Please leave me alone. It literally just creeps me the hell out. Like, and the thing is, I don't have, like, the genetic puberty and mutation as my generation that everyone else looks older than their age i literally look like a 14 year old even though i'm 21 year old but still i don't care leave me alone you are old enough to be my parent i don't care leave me alone that's it bye love you guys oh my gosh oh my gosh i like I'm having so many flashbacks literally of similar un- circumstances. It unlocked a repressed memory um, Same. from an Uber like probably five years ago. And oh, it was bad. It was like so gross. It's be, so gross. Well, especially if you when they're old enough where it's like you didn't even like that thought was so far out of the realm of possibility in your mind that uh, like if you were like, for example, my situation, I was in an Uber. <laughs> I think my car had broken down or something. And I vividly remember that I had taken the Uber to go get weed. And it was like a 15 minute drive. So I'm in the car and I had to, I obviously was going to ask him because he was going to be able to smell it. So I wasn't just going to be like, hey, drop me off here. Oh, wait, I'm getting back in. We're just going home again. So I asked him when I got in if that would be okay. And I did it very like, hey, um, so big favor to ask. And I was being just really friendly. (laughs) He took it the wrong he, way. He was so, he was Why? like, oh, yeah, Why? of course, sure, yeah, of course. Being super friendly back, we're chatting, we're on the way back to my apartment, and he's like, so, what are you up to tonight? I would love to take you on a date. And I'm like, ew, no, what, what is happening? And he was literally like 50. And I'm like, that's so weird and also makes you so uncomfortable because like now this person knows where you live. And there was still like a, over 10 minutes left in the car ride. So then that's it was terrifying. just awkwardly silent. Do you know what I used to do? And this is my advice to any people out there listening who have been in these situations. This is what I used to do. Luckily at this point, I'm already like too old to where it would like if I was single, almost like be age appropriate for me to date someone middle age. So like this doesn't happen to me. Thank God. Also, I'm telling you, some people don't like wearing wedding rings. I freaking love it. I feel like it's a repeller. So I recommend getting a fake wedding ring if you have to, which you shouldn't Mm. have to because people shouldn't be creepy. But this is what I used to do. If, If a weird like old dude would try to say something to me, I'd be like, just curious, how old are you? And then they would tell me their age and I'd be like, oh my gosh, same as my dad. That's what I would do every time. And they would get the I don't know. I feel like you could get some creepy responses from that. But yeah, you could actually. Um, (laughs) But the other thing that she said that really grinds my gears is that the guy said she was unfriendly. That, my friends, is right on par with when someone tells you, you should smile more. Get out of my freaking face. Go away. Like, why? No. Why, why, Why should I smile more? Makes no sense. Sorry. No. But I don't really have a good retort for the friendly thing. It's... I'm just so think, thinking <laughs> about the fact that like literally any girl has like just an endless like there's not even singular memories of that that pop up because it's just happened so many times. And that guys 
genuinely don't even realize that that is happening. It's even so though they odd. do it. <laughs> um, the other thing I'm just like remembering really quickly is like just the creepiness levels, especially like when I was young and the internet was still new. I remember this old guy once like trying to get my number or something. And so I Googled him immediately. Married with a family with children. I was like, should I reach out to his wife? Let him let her know. Should I just ruin his life really quick? I don't know. It seems like a good idea. Well, and also, um, what uh, my um response, which I feel like is never believable because I like don't know how to say it, um, is that I have a boyfriend and I like am probably laughing as I'm saying it because it's unbelievable to me. And <laughs> otherwise, I feel like it, it, there is no way to turn down a guy like that by just being like i'm not interested like i feel like I then think, they don't take no for an answer then they like try harder do you know what works though i didn't even think i told chris this <laughs> it's like he's sitting in the same fucking room weird. um so i was in walmart recently and this guy came up to me in like the chip aisle and i was just trying to get some pretzels like leave me the f alone <laughs> and this guy came up and was like trying to like I would really like to talk to you sometime. And what? I said, I, I, he was just really weird. It was also Walmart, which a lot of weird stuff happens yeah, there. That's why you and, don't get ready for anything. And I just said, <laughs> I looked at him and I put my hands like this and I said, please stop talking to me. And then he just went away. <laughs> it well, was I also feel like with masks now, that doesn't feel as off limits. Right. Like, like I guess you could say like, I, I don't want your germs near me or whatever. Just act like a complete germ, but be like, back away, six feet. But I was just like, please... I don't want to talk to you. Go away. Thank you. I feel like that could work. Please, I don't want to talk to you. Please go away. Like, it's, I just, it's still like, who polite. the hell is going up to people in a Walmart and being like, I want to talk to you? I don't like, know. What? I don't know. I like, don't know. That's it's not very a odd. situation where you're in a scenario where you're opening yourself up to meeting people. It's like, no, I'm running errands. Back <laughs> the fuck off. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm so sorry that this happened to you, to our, our caller friend. I know. And, um, no, you're I, not alone. You're not alone. There's a whole community of people out there going through the same things. But again, we want you guys to call us. It's 562-661-5729. And lucky for all of you, today we have someone joining us on the show who is far more wise than I am, highly inspirational. And I, I mean, man, I wish she was on the show for this part because I feel like she'd have a great answer. But anyways, let's jump in. <laughs> Okay, you guys, you are in for a major treat today. So are we, let's be real. Because joining us on Overshare for the very first time is one of my personal internet crushes, Ashley Lemieux. Hello, Ashley. How's it going? Hey, guys. Oh, that's so good. I'm so happy to be chatting with you face to face finally. Totally. Um, so this is actually the first time that Ashley and I have ever had like face-to-face -face contact, even though we have been friends on the interwebs for kind of a long time, which Don't is you crazy. Love the internet? I do. I really do. And we definitely pride ourselves on this show on having like a wide array of multi-hyphenate human beings on. And you are so multi-hyphenate. Like today I was doing some like deep stalking of you and you have hyphens. I didn't even know you had like, you have a clothing line. And you had like a brick and mortar shop at one point. You're an entrepreneur. You're an author. Like, okay, what am I missing that I don't have on the hyphenated I list? I mean, I think, I think that's it. I think that's it. I, you know, my very favorite thing though is what I currently have that I've spent the past almost decade building, which is an online community for women. So no matter like the different side projects that I take on. I mean, my clothing line wasn't a side project. That was a full on Huge. operation that almost ran me into the ground, but it was, <laughs> it was fun for those few years. But um, it all goes back to wanting to serve and empower women to help them find freedom and clarity in their life. So it's fun. Absolutely. Yeah. I realize also we're doing a podcast. Of course, you also have a podcast. I just started it last September. So I've been doing it for just a few months. Um, I literally yeah. was like, I what month is fun. it? I know. <laughs> I forgot. It's nice because it, it's much, it feels way like less pressure than filming a video or doing something more formal. Right? And I feel like the feedback isn't as immediate as far as just mm -hmm. like 
If I didn't, <laughs> you, it can yeah. trickle in. It's like, oh, like, we'll oh, just ignore that. The worst, worst podcast ever. I won't know that people felt that way for a while, so I can just go on my way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just jump right into that topic, by the way, because, you know, I see the word shine used so much in all of your various projects, Born to Shine, which was your first book. Um, your second book is coming out, by the way, little plug, go ahead and pre-order it. I pre-ordered oh, mine today. I'm very excited about it. But this concept of shining, I think, can be really hard for people in our shoes sometimes when you're just getting like so much feedback and <laughs> a lot of it is positive. But some of it is like so unnecessarily negative. How do you deal with that as like also an adult woman who's getting feedback from other adult women who are like maybe allegedly the worst people on the Internet? I don't know. I feel like I could talk about this for so long. And the very honest answer is that literally last week I have therapy weekly. And last week, our whole session was about me handling my anxiety surrounding the feedback that I get online, especially as my new book, I am here is about to come out. I think when you pour yourself into work that you're very passionate about, um, there's people out there who know how to attack you and know how to attack it just in the way where it like really gets you. I mean, cause people can tell me I have wrinkles on my face all day and that doesn't bother me. Right. But but the things that really you put your integrity and heart into that then is just torn apart that gives me a tremendous amount of anxiety. So something that I, I actually talk about this in my new book because of what a role the anxiety that um, this has created in my life has just done to me. But something that I mm -hmm. say is that is peace be with you as you go on your way. Sometimes I say it out. Sometimes I'll read the comment and I'll just say it to myself. Sometimes I, I just need to like physically write it and respond. But what I learned is, is that a lot of times when I'm being attacked online and I don't say anything, I feel voiceless and I feel powerless. And then that creates more of an anxiety. So if I can come up with one response that allows me to accept right now that this really hurt but I'm going to put an end to it because peace be with you as you go on your way. I'm so sorry for whatever pain has led you to this place where you're just a mean person. But now I'm cutting off. I'm making this boundary where you can't suck my energy anymore. So that's how I deal. I go to therapy. That's so powerful. That's actually, it's, that's it's <laughs> much more mature than how I handle some <laughs> I'm not good, honestly, at arguing in real life or online. I'm very non-confrontational. So I think that's a really great tool because I have also sort of like made this choice over the last like 10 years to make an effort to always really respond to the positive comments because I feel like that empowers people to want to be positive because the end of the day, I think people just want to be heard and seen. And sometimes I feel like responding to the negative comments is like empowering people. But if you just say, peace be with you, like the It'll conversation, them off more. it's over at that point. Like it, it's just time to move on. I think that's so smart. How did you come up with that? My therapist. Therapy oh. great. And then so, <laughs> like, worth the money. Yeah, who is it? <laughs> Yesterday I, I received a, a terrible comment. Like, super bad. And I said that, and then she responded back. And so then for me, I said, I will not be engaging in this conversation anymore. So for me, if I can create, it's kind of like an energy block. I view it as where if it's not open ended, then I just feel like they, I keep giving them this energy that they don't deserve to have. But if I can stop it, then for me, it helps me close this mind loop. And I just, I just do better. So that's kind of become my, my thing <laughs> to help me with all of the opinions, you know, about me. The other thing I think it's hard too, is that if you give, give weight to the good opinions, then, then you give weight to the bad opinions. And so I also think that sometimes even good feedback right away, when we're just so overwhelmed with people's opinions of us all, all the time, either good or bad. It's like, well, am I doing this now for validation? And, and if you're not getting that feedback, mm -hmm. then you're like, well, I need to feel validated. And, and so the internet can just become a really draining place. 
to be overall. So 100%. I think, I think too, like something that I just really respect about you, so many things that you do and really inspire me, but I've always found it as someone who's been on the internet for like, I'm a dinosaur at this point on the internet. Um, and I've always been like really intentional about what I share. And I feel like I've definitely held back on certain things because I'm just scared. I'm scared of that feedback, right? And I think you have been one of the most transparent people I have ever seen in, on the internet, like period, that's it. How do you like, how do you draw a line between like, I'm gonna share this or I'm not going to, because especially for me now being married, which I got married later, I guess, in life, 37. Um, even with like relationship stuff, I'm like, okay, like, I guess I have to talk to this other person before I share this. Cause it's not just about me. It's about us. How do you do that? Because I feel like you do it. You're just like blessing so many people with sharing your stories. That's so nice of you. And to be honest there, you know, it's so crazy because while I do share so much online, there's also a lot that I don't share the things that I don't share. I have to ask myself the question of, is this going to impact someone else involved in the situation in a way that isn't fair for me to share their, their part of the story or share this experience because it also involves their story. And so I really try to be careful with that. And then there's also just, you know, some things in your life that you hold so close and personal that I don't want to, that it's not up for discussion. It just is this special part of my life. Um, but how I decide what to share is that ever since I was little, because growing up, I was so shy. And so I would just not talk at school all day and I'd run home and then I would write my feelings and throw it under my bed. And so now I feel like I'm still the same as an adult, except I talk more. Um, but like internally, I'm really shy, but I write every single day. And so the things that come to me when I write are the things that I know that I'm also supposed to share with other people. Um, because even though the details of all of our lives are drastically different, the experiences, the, the feelings that we share, they connect us. And so I know if I'm feeling a certain way and can help give women words that helps it make sense to them that they can cling on to, um, that no matter what they're going through, that I can provide a tool to help them. And so that's how I decide what I share and don't share. I love it. Honestly, I know I've gained and garnered so much from just following you on Instagram. And I'm so excited about this next book, which isn't out yet. So you don't want to give like everything away. Oh, I'm so excited. But like, I'm like but how like, do you write a book? Yes, that's a great starting point. <laughs> Literally, I, I was <laughs> truly because I am working on something that I'm writing like a script for. And it's just like a lot of pages in a Word document. And I thought about it the other day. I was like, how do people write books? Like, I can't keep track 10 pages. Like, it's so much. Does your brain just want to explode all the time? Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> so this is my second. I Am Here is my second book. And I wrote them pretty close together. And so as soon as we were done with the tour for the first book, I went immediately into writing I Am Here. And I was pumped about it because there was so much new things that I wanted to share. Um, and then I have another question. Oh, yeah. Do you do you write it uh, like linear, like start to finish? Or do you just like, do you also like have some parts that you're like, oh, I really want to write about this one thing. Okay. And then you just like kind of get to it this later. Is actually, a really good question that I never even asked. Um, so what happens is you submit a book proposal to a publish the publishers. Um, and it's laid out by chapters. So in the beginning, writing that book proposal takes a long time. You have to get everything. I was going to say, out. so you have to have an actual outline. Yeah, you gotta got to have it. like a plan, right? It's not written, <laughs> and you send in maybe two sample cha chapters. But by the time you start, you at least have this blueprint of a plan. Now, with I am here, it was it was a different situation because my book was due in February of last year, so a little over a year ago. Um, at that time I was also pregnant and I turned in the book and I told my husband, I feel like my book's not done. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what 
but my book was due. It was all done, but I kept telling him it's not complete. I don't know what I'm missing. And then, um, the month after literally four weeks later, pandemic comes and the world changes for everyone. And right in the middle of the beginning of that, um, I got really sick and I went septic and we ended up losing our baby boy at 16 weeks, um, pregnant. And that was an experience all in and of itself. But so then after a few months of me healing and, and going through all these things that I, I went back to my publisher and I was like, my book's not complete. And so I went back in, I rewrote, I wrote a whole new first, a whole new beginning of the book and then a whole new end of the book. So it was like, I had the middle there, but that was kind of the first time where it was completely out of order, but the way that it ended up is something that I've never been so proud of. And I just, I feel like, I feel like it is my privilege to be able to hand these words now over to women who need them because they're not just mine anymore. Mm -hmm. And you sharing that story specifically, I mean, absolutely heartbreaking, devastating. I'm curious how it's been healing for you to be able to share your story with other so many other women that go through not the exact same circumstance. But I think as we're learning more and more, whether it's the topic of infertility or miscarriage, things that have been so taboo, I mean, at least in my lifetime, it's not something I even knew what those words meant as a kid growing up. And I think people sharing their stories are really just allowing it to be more of an open conversation, obviously for people, but so healing for so many people. But what about for you? Yeah, last night, I was actually thinking about this because I was thinking that if one in four pregnancies end in a miscarriage, why is it that it's been so taboo to talk about? Um, and last night, I just had this thought that I think a lot of times we we think we look at other people um, or we think of the worst, some of the worst situations that we're afraid of happening in our own lives. And child loss is one of those things that probably most people never want to experience, right? And they know that it's painful. And so sometimes I think that perhaps talking about miscarriage has been taboo because then that would require other people people to put themselves in other people's shoes that they don't want to put themselves into. Um, and so instead of talking about it, we retreat and, and, and we can put people who have miscarriages or uh, fertility problems um, into a separate cap category and say, well, that's them. And we create this other type of relationship. Well, that, that's that type of people. And I'm over here into the people who don't experience that. Because I think that it just makes it easier because if it can be them, then that means it doesn't have, have to happen to me. Right. Every That we're saying, yeah. right. Exactly. So, yeah. Not to mention, I feel like also how like mental health too, how it has been stigmatized for so long and people didn't talk about it, but like everyone has mental health problems that innately, and I, I obviously have not experienced a miscarriage, so I'm not sure, but I would assume that it is a very isolating experience. And then because it's so isolating, you don't talk to other people. So everyone is just like dealing with their own pain. But I would also assume that it does help to share it because you're finding out that you aren't as alone as yeah. you thought. As I start sharing, there's literally so many women who have gone through this um, and who haven't been able to find words to how they feel or find people to connect with about it or just to know that those feelings that they feel that are full of shame and guilt and pain, that those feelings are normal and that they're not weird or broken for having them. And so yeah. as I've been able to share, it's also helped to remind me because that was one of the biggest things is when I got home from the hospital and, and I still look pregnant and I have a pick line for IVs in my arm for the next several weeks. That's so sick. Every time I passed the mirror, I would see my belly and my body and just be so ashamed and feel so guilty. That, and I just thought that it was just my fault. Um, and so as I started sharing that those were my feelings and other women started telling me that they had those same feelings, I realized 
that it wasn't just me and that there was nothing broken about me. And so being able to talk about it has been incredibly healing for me as well. And does it also kind of give you, I know I've been dealing with um, chronic back pain for a long time and it's very easy to feel like every day is the same and there's like no progress, but then I'll look back and be like, oh, actually like a year ago, I couldn't do this. And now I am capable of doing this, that I feel like sharing your stuff and then hearing other people's stories, you're like, oh, well, I have made some progress because I do, I was at where they are now at one point and now I've been able to overcome it or at least improve Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. I, I always say that healing isn't one big moment and I think we want it to be. We want some miracle to happen that just snaps our fingers and it's all gone. Um, but healing isn't just one big moment. It's constant mo- movement forward. And so when we're able to track that, it can be really powerful and, and as you're going through it every single day, like you just said, you don't realize how far down the path you've gotten until you look back and you can acknowledge, wow, I have a totally different reaction to this than I used to, or wow, like, look what I was able to do today. Um, and something that my therapist also has taught me is that the way to know where you're going is to talk to those coming back. So as far as grief or loss or chronic pain, there's a lot of hope in talking to people who are three, four, five years out from the thing that you're going through, because it adds this component of hope when you're able to see someone who's farther on their healing journey, um, it gives you permission to be like, okay, I, I can do this. I can also get to where they are too. Makes it feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes, totally. I definitely, I definitely think just even from, like I said, following you on Instagram, which by the way, if you guys are not following this woman, look in our show notes, look in the info section, you need to, because not only do you post so much content that's so vulnerable and informational, also want to get to some of the silly stuff you post as well, because you're hilarious. (laughs) Um, But, but now at this place that you are in your healing journey, what are like, how, how did you kind of start like claiming joy in your life and like coming back to, to being who you are right now? So I started asking myself questions every morning because, um, before we lost our baby boy, we also lost, um, two older kids who we were permanent guardians over for four years. And that buried me more than anything that's happened in my whole life. And I lost who I was. And and trying to reclaim who I was and who I wanted to be in this life we wanted to rebuild. It's hard to do that when it feels impossible to wake up and get out of bed in the morning. So in the mornings, I started asking myself a simple question, which was, what is my intention today? It was easy, right? Like I just, I just needed something that felt like it gave me purpose to wake up. And at first it would be really simple. Like today, my intention is to connect with my husband. And so I'd planned some things to do that because we were going through grief and our relationship was rocky. Um, other times it would be to show up as a big ball of love to work meetings that I didn't want to go to. I just, I focused really specifically on an intention. And as I did that and, and saw myself doing well in those areas that I was focusing on, I was like, okay, I can have this help bring me purpose back. Maybe this will help me create a clear path forward. Um, So then from that question, four more questions came to me throughout my meditation and my healing journey, which um, I've created a morning practice that has changed my life from what is my intention today? Who am I going to serve today? What can I set down today? Like, what can I stop carrying that has been really weighing on me? How does the truest version of myself show up today? And it's not who does the best version of me show up today? Because I think when we ask ourselves who the best version of ourselves is, we start answering based off of what other people want from us. Um, So for me, answering the question every day, who is the truest version of myself keeps inviting me to come back, back home into myself despite pain, despite what might feel like it's crumbling around me. I feel like I can be in control of those areas of my life when everything else feels out of control, which has then helped us and empowered us to rebuild our lives into what it is today. 
I was thinking as you were saying all of that, I'm like, man, she should write a book about all of this. I am here. Lucky for all of us. This is what I am here is about is to help you rebuild your path or, or to continue I to love build that. your path so that you have clarity and freedom from the things that otherwise might be weighing you down every day. And I love that you brought up your husband, your lovely husband, which is actually how you and I connected. I met Ashley's husband, Mike, many years ago and have been like following your guys' journey from living in Arizona and moving to Nashville and having a fun stint there, which like your guys' life there looked so fun. fun. (laughs) I love the aesthetic. You had like this cool truck, this like old truck that you rated. That was really cool. Now you're back in Arizona where you are also basically low-key interior designers. I mean, no, not designers. Mike deserves no credit for what we've done on our house. Let's be real. The truth comes no. out. No, but I love, yeah, being able to renovate our home. I can't do the DIY stuff. We hire contractors, but I love designing and just bringing things to life. It's been really fun. Yeah, I saw your recent reels and I uh, saw the whole house and it looks Thank fantastic. You. But I do also want to touch on... Because to me, and I've actually talked to your husband about this before, I feel like for women, especially, you hit this certain age, maybe it's like 12, 13, where, and, and hopefully this is starting to dissipate and is no longer a thing for young women. But I felt at that age that it was like, okay, you're a young teenager. It's time to stop being silly and doing like, like little funny things on the playground and it's time to get serious Mm. and sexy. Like I felt like that was the pressure that honestly, I don't know if you guys felt like that, but that for young girls, (laughs) just picturing serious, sexy Jocelyn on the playground. Obviously I never took that route. I knew it wasn't going to work for me. I've always been just a weirdo and I've always fully embraced it. Yeah. I literally just tweeted. Um, I would say yesterday, but who knows what day it is. Um, that I turned 31 this week and oh, I yeah. still feel 18. Always. And and not in this, I was like, and also <laughs> 85 at the same time. Like my body <laughs> feels 85, but I'm like in the terms of like, I don't like, you think that p- you become an adult at some point? No, it's a lie. It is a lie, right? And you, <laughs> no. that you, you grow yeah. up in here and get to this place where you've arrived. And then every year you're like, is this, is this the year that I've arrived? Because I don't feel like. No, if no, anything, no. No, and then it's just more alarming because you become more aware that the uh, the old adults don't know what's going on either. <laughs> it's funny, but I think like I've realized over the years, I'm 38 now and I'm wearing a floral overall and I have my hair done like an eight-year-old. So like, obviously I don't care about these things, but I've made it like a part of my like secret mission to do silly things and be like kind of a, a wacky person at times, hopefully in hopes that it empowers people to do the same because I think, um, I take having fun very seriously in life. I think it's super important. And I feel like you and Mike are great examples of that. So like, how do you incorporate like the fun, the silly, some would say wacky into your lives? Cause I see it on the <laughs> social needs. So I, uh, it makes me really happy that you've noticed that because for the past several years, probably up until even just a few months ago, Um, I felt like that part of our lives had been sucked out because when you're grieving really deep, you don't, nothing feels fun. Like it doesn't feel fun. You don't feel fun, but growing up. Yeah. Growing up, I was really funny and I was really fun. And, um, so now, and, and I think this is one of those moments where I can look back and be like, wow, look at, look at the progress in my healing journey that I have made Uh, having fun. Like the beginning of this year, uh, Mike and I were just like, what is our goal this year? We just want to have fun. Like we just want to freaking have fun, whatever that looks like, whether that's me pranking <laughs> him, putting cockroach, fake cockroaches in my leftovers. Cause he always eats them or doing dances with my dad. My, <laughs> so I will say that this component of fun in our lives, my dad is in his sixties. My uh, following on Instagram is obsessed with him because he never grew up from an 18 year old. He's a, he's a lawyer. He's very grown up in that way. But as far as having fun and just being crazy and goofy, I grew up with a dad who always was that way. He has like his, he, what he's known for is this dance move where he laughs with his arm around the air while he's smacking his own butt with his other hand. We will be out in public. We'll be in restaurants. 
my family will just start chanting horse, 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 because that's the dance move name and he will just take off. So like, that's how I grew up. And um, it's been a part of me and it, and it feels really, it was just so happy that that part of me is, has come back to life now. I actually saw a video of you and your dad, <laughs> which I kind of want to recreate with my dad because my dad is kind of wild too, but where you had him like naming out what different like feminine <laughs> products were, like you were holding them up and you were like, what is this for? <laughs> I had an ovulation kit. He's very, he gets very awkward about any female it type of anything. Um, so I just had my little ovulation test out and he was so freaked out. He's like, I don't, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't need to know about this. Uh, but yeah, he's totally game for doing videos and stuff. So it's super fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Well, like I said, at the beginning of our chat, you're so multi hyphenate. You have even the podcast, you have the books, you have all the things. What have you not tackled besides obviously the importance of having fun this year in 2021? But like, what is what I'm big, I'm a big believer in like, throwing things out into the universe because like who knows who's listening to this podcast I always am like Oprah might be listening right. so she's not but if she is she might be um, you can throw that out there <laughs> she might be so like what's something that you're like manifesting or that you want to have happen in the future that you haven't tackled yet we so right now our big thing is trying to get pregnant and and lead to a successful I love that. delivery and um and it's actually yeah, that's that's my thing. I, I think career right I can't even say that word. Career <laughs> wise, I, I feel good about where I'm at. I'm really excited for my book to come out. And and the thing that we both want the most in our life right now is our baby. And so that's where my all my head and heart are at right now. Um and I believe it will happen. It's just a matter of when, but I think that's that's the thing. Absolutely. Well, we're believing for it too. Um, before we wrap up the show, we have one final segment. Are you down to hang out with us for the final part of the show? Oh, yeah. So long, share well. I hate us so much more now. Okay, Lil, why don't you kick us off with what this segment is? So this is our final segment, Share Well, and it's just us sharing something that brought us joy this week and saying farewell at the same time. Perfect. <laughs> I bought these sweatpants and sweatshirt. <laughs> I, I, I bought these sweatpants. I bought this sweatshirt and these sweatpants. I'm wearing at Target today because you know what? I just felt like it was time for another new pair. They're cute. Lily, I have a quick, quick question for you. Just an approximate estimation. How many pairs of tie-dye sweatpants uh, sets do you have now? Hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> The limit does not exist. <laughs> Ashley, have you been wearing real pants at all this year? I have. I have some real pants on right now just because wow. I'm leaving my house after this. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know why I haven't I would, been doing that. <laughs> I was supposed to go to lunch with my mom recently and I uh, bailed. Whoops. <laughs> I napped instead. But um, when I was going to get ready, I was like... <clears throat> What do I wear? Like, what? What is a normal outfit now? What is what is socially expected? We don't know anymore because <laughs> I feel like I feel like there are no social norms anymore. So it's kind of nice. Honestly, something I've discussed at length on this podcast, Ashley, is that I have learned throughout the last year during the pandemic what a croc women's undergarments are because we should all just be wearing men's underwear. <laughs> They're so much more comfortable. They're a little more visible under like a yoga pant. Yeah. But I mean, men's underwear are a blessing to us all. Forget about women's undergarments. That's like my main takeaway. Is that I your joy a moment this week? Was wearing your husband's, not this week. Husband's no, brownies. this joy moment in life. But I did wear them yesterday, and it was a good day. <laughs> it was a really good day for my butt. I felt very happy. <laughs> I have a question that's unrelated to any of this. But um, when all of this is quote unquote over, uh. Are we gonna? What, how long are we wearing masks for? Still, great question. I don't know I the answer. Only ask because th yes, they can be annoying sometimes, but for the most part, it's so nice to not have to deal with like if I have like zit stickers or if I have something going on with my face, just cover it up. 
No one has to know. I don't know the answer, but I will say that especially here in LA, I don't I don't know a date that we would ever be able to stop wearing them. Honestly. Right. Like I'm kind of OK if it becomes just like the new norm. I do spend a lot of time in Arizona, which Ashley, uh, we absolutely hot. have to meet up at some point in yes, Arizona. I think it's time. Uh, it's time soon. It is. And I'll come too because <laughs> back to my old stomping Literally, grounds. You gotta come. I went to Arizona State. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> it was a great time. Go devil. <laughs> Ashley, what brought you joy this week? Um, so Mike and I have become obsessed with playing pickleball. Ooh! And we love pickleball. Mike has like, he turns into this new person when we play pickleball. It's, he's kind of annoying. So we, his name is Pickleball Paul. Like he has a whole pickleball persona. Oh, wow. Well, I love the alliteration. So Paul. Yes. I'm Googling um, what pickleball is. In both games. Oh, it's like tennis, but shorter. I've, what Lots are these rackets? You don't. It's so fun, you guys. But I beat Mike in both of the games. He's going to be so pissed that I'm talking about this right now. I, I was full of so much joy. <laughs> do you go to a court or do you play like, do you have a net in your oh, yard? No, you go to it. No, you go to a court. So there's a park by us. They probably have, this is amazing. They probably have at least 20 courts and there's a pickleball association. We're not a part of it, but we want to join <laughs> that all these people come. And they play each other and they compete and all the things. And sometimes we'll go and we'll just play pickup games with other people who we think, hey, they might be good competition. Like it's a whole, it's a whole thing. I don't know it's when really the, I'm looking really where this good. article is from, but NBC News says pickle, pickleball is the fastest growing sport you've never heard so you of. Gotta join. <laughs> you got to join it. It's, it's, As of 2019. So <laughs> well, the cool thing about pickleball and tennis is that they were some of the only like COVID approved sports. So you could still keep playing because yeah. you're so far away from each other. But funny mm -hmm. story about pickleball in LA. So Chris and I love playing tennis. Just want a pickle. And one morning, now I, I love a good pickle too. <laughs> one morning we got up at like 6 a.m. to get to the tennis courts before anyone came to stake them out. And we got there and we were like, this tennis court feels different. But we thought we were just tired because it was They're so early. Specific size yeah to, it's it's, it's a, a tiny court. oh yeah it's like a tiny yeah, tennis court smaller. and we didn't realize we were on a pickleball court for like 30 minutes because we were so tired the ball i'm just so <laughs> confused that they have like they have designated pickleball courts at parks oh yeah 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 oh yeah at least here they do too it's gone into a huge it's, it's a it's a thing it's a big <laughs> It's a I big just, thing. Mike I, just bought two hundred dollar racket because he well, wanted that, a I, new one. I'm like most <laughs> like, curious. You know, not okay. <laughs> how does the city like when they're building the park? How does, like oh, I bet this community looks like a pickleball community. Like, right? what if they built it with no one ever know. used it? <laughs> or people just tried to play people tennis. Are using it, so <laughs> no one tennis. Sorry, I'm gonna offend everyone, but you know tennis is like out with the old and with the new, and it's time to pickle. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, it it is like such an amazing workout too. It's a crazy <laughs> workout. Yeah, when you're playing one on one, we'll come home, we'll just be sweating. <laughs> So I'm so intrigued hot, but it's fun yeah you gotta play Lily you and me pickleball it's happening it sounds like a disaster you gotta play doubles two on two though it's it's more fun that way honestly the court's a little small I'm afraid it would hit someone with the bracket <laughs> let's be honest no you won't it, it, feels like it, it looks like like beach tennis <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. Well, what brought me what brought me joy this week is kind of could be peripherally related to sports. And that is that Chris's birthday was a few weeks ago. And so I did what any like good partner would do and I bought him a gift that I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um so Lily actually is the first person who ever turned me on to the Theragun. And if you guys oh, are, did you get yeah. one? We have those. So I bought a Theragun for Chris <gasps> and it's the small travel size, which is perfect because we're always on the go. So it's like the little, like... it's little, it's about this big, but man, it does the trick. Like I will never need a massage again for the rest of my life, but here's the best part, you guys. <laughs> so I got him the Theragun and I was like, this is the best gift ever. It's a gift for me. I'm, it feels amazing. It's worth every penny. And my brother and sister saw that I had had this box delivered to our house. My brother calls me a few hours later and he's like, is Chris around? And I was like, no, he's like, 
you have to send the Theragun back. He's like, because we got him one too. <laughs> so now we have two Theraguns. Yeah, I was going to say, no, keep them both. It feel, and if you're, are they both travel work. ones? <laughs> the tiny ones? Oh so my gosh. So literally do it, do it like, I mean, you could do it on each other, do it on like your back too. But if you even do it on both your legs at the same time, it's life changing. Ashley, have you ever tried one of these out before? No. So Mike has it. Oh, he, he does. Okay, great. Um, I feel like people don't yeah. realize the full potential that it holds. <laughs> that like, even if you're not sore and you're just kind of like achy and not feeling good, if you just kind of do it over your whole body, especially like your feet and your calves, you feel like I oh, feels yeah, like I'm feet. floating. Actually, Lily, was you were the first person to ever introduce me to the Theragun because I feel like they sent you one early it's on. because right? um, a guy from my high school is an investor in it. So another guy from my school had one. And then I was like, Man, do you think I can get one of those? <laughs> and they sent me one. And then um, the next thing I knew, I had three. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you it's worth the hype. It's amazing. Um, I got a good deal on ours. I bought it on Amazon. Yeah, how much is the travel one? They gave me a discount. It was like two fifteen, which is a lot of money. It's a lot of money, but better but than I think it's like six hundred for the. If it's an investment in size. my health, I am here for it. Okay, I'm into investing in my health in the thirties. Especially <laughs> even it. if you just like travel or walk a lot. This is not sponsored, but that would be amazing. <laughs> um, doing it to the bottom of your feet after walking like heels for a long time. The best. Yeah. The absolute best. Um, well, Ashley, thank you so much for coming to hang out with us. I hope that next time I see you, it's like in real life, real life, like not on a computer yes, screen. Please. Um, last thing I'm curious about, because Lily bought it, brought up like post-COVID life. Like, what is one thing that you are like, this is what I'm gonna get down with when this is like fully over? Oh, Hawaii. That's all we talk about. We are in our minds. We are already in Hawaii. We've been there for a long time, but I keep looking up places to stay like three months out just to get it an idea of, okay, if it's in three months, where are we going to be? We'll be in Hawaii for sure. Oh, I love that for you. A low freaking ha. <laughs> um, okay. Last thing before we wrap up, please share where the people can find you on all of the internet locations. Oh, okay. Come find me on Instagram. I love our community of that we've built on Instagram. Come find me there at Ashley K Lemieux. And then you can go order. I am here wherever books are sold. And um, my website is the shine project.com. Woohoo. And I recommend love also it. got mine today pre-ordered on Amazon, which is fun because you. when you pre-order on Amazon or anywhere for that matter, it's like you forget about it. And then one day you just have a package. It's so fun. It shows up. That it happens to me when I just order something. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, you guys, this episode of Overshare is over. Thank you so much for being here. If you are new to the podcast, please do what's good. Subscribe, leave us a rating, leave us a review, like three words. We would absolutely love that so that more people can join this party. And we will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.